finishing the exhaust piping of the new condenser on my Stuart Victoria model steam engine plant and giving it a test run. In the previous video I showed the piping of the condenser and now it's the piping of the condenser to the boiler. Firstly I need to make a special fitting and this part I'm making sits inside the chimney and directs the steam up the chimney. But it's not a blast pipe like on a coal fired boiler. On a model steam locomotive a blast pipe increases the velocity of the steam going up the chimney and therefore it draws the fire better but I really don't need that with the gas fired boiler. On screen I've been showing how I made this component and I haven't bothered mentioning much about it because it is fairly self explanatory. Once the component has been successfully parted off and now held in the cross vise on the drilling machine I drill a cross hole. This is quarter of an inch in diameter to take this piece of quarter inch diameter pipe and in this next step I'm going to silver solder the pipe into the fitting. You've just seen how I cleaned up the end of the tube with the belt sander and now using a piece of scotch brite I'm cleaning up the outside part of the tube that's going to be silver soldered into the fitting. I can't help but think this looks very much like a periscope, sort of a comedy periscope. But no, it's a fitting to direct the steam up the chimney. On screen at the moment I'm making two errors. And the first one is that I'm applying far too much silver solder flux. And the second mistake is coming straight in with full heat and what happens is the flux boils and goes everywhere. The best way to do it really is to apply the flux and put the part on one side until all the water has evaporated and then it's much more stable. But if like me you're impatient and you can't wait to get on with the job then you have to do it another way. And what I would normally do is just apply some heat to the pipe well behind where the flux is. The heat travels along the pipe, dries out the flux and then you can apply the heat to the part you wish to silver solder without the flux going all over the place. A lot of beginners make the mistake of quenching the part too early to cool it down. What you must do is wait until the part has cooled to black. Never quench a part that is red hot. And also because the thermal conductivity of copper is very good not only the part you've been soldering but the other end of the pipe is also going to be extremely hot so always pick up the component with an old pair of pliers. This clip shows me bending the pipe slightly. I made the fitting as small as possible because it's quite invasive and will block up the chimney somewhat. Over now to the rest of the piping. This is quite a fiddly job and I've done a lot of this so I find it fairly straightforward but you will make mistakes. But don't get dispirited, just grin and bear it, write it off to experience because you will get better at it the more you practice. On screen at the moment is the die holder that I showed in the last video and once again I'm going to cover the setting of this. The middle screw opens up the die provided that the two outer screws are not tight. So first of all you slacken off the two outer screws and then you tighten the middle screw. What this does is expands the die slightly. And by doing this it makes the thread that you're cutting oversize. And when cutting threads in a soft metal like copper you need to be very gentle. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the viewer who made a very valid and very good comment on the last video. And this is what the viewer wrote. I have found when threading soft piping it helps to stick a solid plug mandrel into the end to support it while cutting the thread. Now that really is a very very good idea. And as I'm already using the chuck in the tailstock to keep the die holder in line, it would be a very simple job just to put a piece of bar in the end of the tailstock chuck, which would go down into the pipe. I do appreciate the comments, uh, not all of them, some of them are really stupid. But this comment was definitely one of the better ones. And now with the help of a 3 8 by 32 threads per inch union nut, I can attach one end of this pipe to the condenser, and the other end, the one I threaded, allows the fitting of one of these excellent PM Research elbow castings. The long pipe that goes up to the chimney is going to be quite tricky. But after a bit of pulling and pushing and bending it fitted perfectly where I wanted it to be. And now at last it's playtime. Uh, no, and now I'm going to test the engine to make sure that my condenser is fully functional. Here I'm lighting the burner. The water pipes are all in place so it's just a case of waiting. And I didn't have to wait very long. Using a camping gas cylinder which is much larger doesn't suffer from the chilling problem that you get with the small cans. And as this larger cylinder is only providing gas just for this small burner, it's hardly likely to chill. 
So while I'm waiting for the boiler to raise steam, it's time to go around the engine and apply some oil. And in no time at all, off it goes. If you listen as it starts running, you can hear like a tapping noise. And that's because there is some water in the cylinder and I haven't opened the drain cocks, but it clears soon enough. I know I've just oiled up the engine, but I'm putting some more oil on because I'm going to run the engine very fast. This engine has a tiny bit of play on the small end on the crosshead, so it does occasionally make a tapping noise, but it's nothing, I'll fix it when I get round to it. And it's certainly not worth making a video about. Look at the speed of the engine now, it really is going quite fast. And the reason for this is to try and get some water in the condenser so I can demonstrate emptying it. And here we go. Yes, that's working fine. The back pressure of the engine's exhaust is pumping the water out of the condenser into this suitable receptacle. It's much better now. All the water and steam and oil is not going down the back of the bench, and I suppose I could even run this on the kitchen table. Although being sensible just for a change, I don't recommend it. Running gas-fired boilers with inadequate ventilation can cause problems. I'm running this engine inside the workshop on the workbench, but I'm not too far away from a very large, wide-open garage-type door. And if you remember on one of the previous videos about this steam plant, the carbon monoxide alarm was being tripped. That was when I was using different burners that were unsuitable. This burner seems OK, it's very clean, no bad smells coming out of the chimney, and plenty of heat. And it's not noisy. Because I've been running this engine at a high speed for quite a while, you can hear that it's starting to make a little bit more noise. That's because most of the oil has now been flung off and it needs stopping and re-oiling. Small bearing surfaces always require more oil. What I was very pleased about with this condenser, it functions as a condenser, not just an oil trap. It's time for me to stop talking, but I'll leave the video running to the end. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.